Hello and welcome to this presentation of the STM32G0 Universal Synchronous Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter Interface called USART. It covers the main features of this USART interface, which is widely used for serial communications in embedded systems. The USART is a very flexible serial interface that supports asynchronous UART communication, SPI master and slave modes, smart card ISO 7816 communication, IRDA serial infrared communication, LIN mode. It also provides certain features that are useful when implementing Modbus communications. Applications making use of the USART benefit from the easy and inexpensive connection between devices, which only requires a few pins. In addition, the USART peripheral is functional in low power modes. It comes with transmit and receive FIFOs and can transmit and receive in stop modes. The USART is a fully programmable serial interface featuring the following configurable parameters. Data length, parity, number of stop bits, data order, bound rate generator, and a configurable oversampling mode by 8 or by 16. The USART can operate in FIFO mode and it comes with two FIFOs, transmit and receive FIFOs. You also have the option to use basic RS-232 flow control with CTS and RTS signals. The RS-485 driver enable signal is also supported. The USART supports a dual clock domain allowing wake up from stop mode and bound rate programming independent of the peripheral clock. This also allows the peripheral clock to be throttled along with the core clock without disrupting communications. The USART features a multi-processor mode, which allows the USART to remain idle when it is not addressed. In addition to full duplex communication, single wire half duplex mode is also supported. The USART also offers many other features, including auto bowed rate detection, receiver timeout, and support several modes which will be described later in the presentation. This is the USART block diagram. The USART clock source can be selected from several sources, a peripheral clock, the SIS clock, the high-speed internal 16 MHz oscillator, or a low-speed external oscillator. The USART clock source is divided by a programmable factor in the USART PRESC register in range from 1 to 256. TX and RX pins are used for data transmission and reception. NCTS and NRTS pins are used for RS-232 hardware flow control. The driver enable pin, which is available on the same I.O. as NRTS, is used in RS-485 mode. The clock output, named CK, is dual purpose. When the USART is used in synchronous master-slave mode, the clock provided to the slave device is output and input on the CK pin. When the USART is used in smart card mode, the clock provided to the card is output on the CK pin. Note that the NSS and NCTS signals share the same pin. NSS is the slave selection input applied to the device in synchronous slave mode. The USART has a flexible clocking scheme. The registers are accessed through the APB bus and the kernel is clocked with USART Ker clock pre-scaled or not, which is independent from the APB clock. In order to pass data from one clock domain to the other one, either eight data FIFOs are used or single data buffers. The USART block is an APB slave that can rely on DMA requests to transfer data to or from memory buffers. The functions of the TX and RX pins can be swapped. This allows to work in the case of a cross-wired connection to another UART. The USART receiver implements different user configurable oversampling techniques for data recovery by discriminating between valid incoming data and noise. This allows a trade-off between the maximum communication speed and noise clock inaccuracy immunity. Select oversampling by 8 to achieve higher speed 
up to USART Kerr clock divided by 8, where USART Kerr clock is the USART clock source frequency. In this case, the maximum receiver tolerance to clock deviation is reduced. Select oversampling by 16 to increase the tolerance of the receiver to clock deviations. In this case, the maximum speed is limited to USART Kerr clock divided by 16. The maximum baud rate that can be reached is 8 megabaud when the clock source is at 64 megahertz and oversampling by 8 is configured. With other clock sources and or higher oversampling ratio, the maximum speed is limited. The frame format used in asynchronous mode consists of a set of data bits in addition to bits for synchronization and optionally a parity bit for error checking. The USART supports 7, 8 or 9 bits data lengths. A frame starts with one start bit, where the line is driven low for a one bit period. This signals the start of a frame and is used for synchronization. The start bit is followed by 7, 8 or 9 data bits. If parity control is enabled, the parity bit is transmitted as the last data bit and is included in the data length count. Finally, a number of stop bits selected from 0, 1, 1.5 or 2, where the line is driven high, ends the frame. Data order is programmable with MSB first or LSB first shifting. The standard frame was described in the previous slide. This slide shows an example of 8 bits data frames configured with one stop bit. An idle character is interpreted as an entire frame of 1. The number of 1 will include the number of stop bits. A break character is interpreted on receiving 0 for a frame period. At the end of the break frame, two stop bits are inserted. The USART supports full duplex communication, where TX and RX lines are respectively connected with the other interfaces RX and TX lines. The USART can be configured to follow a single wire half duplex protocol where the TX and RX lines are internally connected. In this communication mode, only the TX pin is used for both transmission and reception. The TX pin is always released when no data is transmitted. Thus, it acts as a standard I.O. in idle or reception modes. This means that the I.O. must be configured so that the TX pin is configured as an alternate function open drain with an external pull-up. In RS-232 communication, it's possible to control the serial data flow between two devices by using the NCTS input and the NRTS output. These two lines allow the receiver and the transmitter to alert each other of their state. The following figure shows how to connect two devices in this mode. The idea is to prevent dropped bytes or conflicts in case of half-duplex communication. Both signals are active low. For serial half-duplex communication protocols like RS-485, the master needs to generate a direction signal to control the transceiver. This signal informs the physical layer if it must act in send or receive mode. In RS-485 mode, a control line is used. The driver enable pin, named DE, is used to activate the external transceiver control. DE shares the pin with NRTS. To simplify communication between multiple processors, the USART supports a multiprocessor mode. In multiprocessor communication, it is desirable that only the intended message recipient should actively receive the message. The devices not being addressed are put into mute mode. The USART can enter or exit from mute mode using one of two methods. Idle line detection, address mark detection. The USART can also communicate synchronously. It can operate as an SPI in master or slave mode with programmable clock polarity and phase and programmable data order with MSB or LSB first. The clock is output in case of master mode or input in case of slave mode on the CK pin. No clock pulses are provided during the start and stop bits. 
When the USART is configured in SPI slave mode, it supports the transmit under run error and the NSS hardware or software management. The USART can be used in smart card mode, based on a half duplex communication. The clock is output to the smart card on the CK pin. It supports the T equals zero protocol and provides many features allowing support for T equals one. Both direct and inverse conventions are supported directly by hardware. The USART supports IRDA specifications, which is a half duplex communication protocol. The data from and to the USART is represented in an NRZ format, where the signal value is at the same level through the entire bit period. For IRDA, the required format is RZI, where a 1 is signalled by holding the line low, and a 0 is signalled by a short, high pulse. The SIR transmit encoder modulates the non-return to zero transmit bitstream output from the USART. The SIR receive decoder demodulates the return to zero bitstream from the infrared detector and outputs the received NRZ serial bitstream to the USART. The USART only supports bit rates of up to 115.2 kilobits per second for the SIR encoder decoder. In normal mode, the transmitted pulse width is specified as 3 sixteenths of a bit period. The USART receiver is able to detect and automatically configure the baud rate based on the reception of one character. The received character can be any character starting with bit 1. In this case, the USART measures the duration of the start bit from falling edge to rising edge. Any character starting with bits 1.0, in this case the USART, measures the duration of the start and of the first data bit. The duration is measured from falling edge to falling edge, ensuring better accuracy in the case of slow signal slopes. With character 0x7f, the baud rate is updated first at the end of the start bit, then at the end of bit 6. With character 0x55, the baud rate is updated first at the end of the start bit, then at the end of bit 0 bit, and finally at the end of bit 6. In parallel, another check is performed for each intermediate transition of the RX line. The USART supports a receiver timeout feature. When the USART doesn't receive new data for a programmed amount of time, a receiver timeout event is signalled and an interrupt is generated if enabled. The USART receiver timeout counter starts counting. From the end of the first stop bit in case of 1 and 1.5 stop bit configuration. From the end of the second stop bit in case of 2 stop bits configuration. From the beginning of the stop bit in case of half stop bit configuration. The USART can operate in FIFO mode which is enabled or disabled by software. It is disabled by default. The USART comes with a transmit FIFO called TX FIFO and a receive FIFO called RX FIFO, each being eight data deep. When the IRDA and LIN modes are used, the FIFO mode is not supported, provided that the TX FIFO and RX FIFO are clocked by the kernel clock. It is possible to transmit and receive data even in stop mode. It's possible to configure TX FIFO and RX FIFO thresholds used mainly to avoid underrun or overrun issue while waking up from stop mode. The USART is able to wake up from MCU from stop mode when the USART clock source is the HSI or LSE clock. The sources of wake up can be a specific wake up event which is triggered by either a start bit or an address match or any received data an RXNE interrupt when FIFO management is disabled, or FIFO event interrupts when FIFO management is enabled, receive FIFO full interrupt, transmit FIFO empty interrupt, receive FIFO threshold interrupt, transmit FIFO threshold interrupt. This slide and the next two ones provide the list of interrupt events, detailing their cause and indicating whether these events can be used as wake-up requests.
Several events can provide an interrupt. The transmit data register empty flag is set when the transmit data register is empty and ready to be written. The transmit complete flag is set when the data transmission is complete and both data and shift registers are empty. The CTS flag is set when the NCTS input toggles. The receive data register not empty flag is set when the receive data register contains data ready to be read. The idle line flag is set when an idle line is detected. The character match flag is set when the received data corresponds to the programmed address. The receiver timeout flag is set when there's no activity on the RX line for a programmed duration. The transmission complete before guard time flag is set after the end of frame transmission and if no knack has been received from the card. The end of block flag is set when a complete block is received. The wake up from stop mode flag is set when the wake up event is verified. The LIN break flag is set when a LIN break frame is detected. The transmit FIFO not full flag is set when the transmit FIFO is not full. The transmit FIFO empty flag is set when the transmit FIFO is empty. The transmit FIFO threshold flag is set when programmed threshold is reached. The receive FIFO not empty flag is set when the receive FIFO is not empty. The receive FIFO full flag is set when the receive FIFO is full. The receive FIFO threshold flag is set when the programmed threshold is reached. Several errors flags can be generated. The overrun error flag is set when an overrun error occurs. The parity error flag is set when a parity error occurs. The framing error flag is set when a framing error occurs. The noise error flag is set when a noise is detected on the received frame. The auto baud rate error flag is set when the baud rate measurement failed. The underrun error flag is set when an underrun error occurs in synchronous slave mode. The DMA requests can be generated when receive buffer not empty or transmit buffer empty flags are set when FIFO management is disabled. The DMA requests can also be generated when the transmit FIFO not full and receive FIFO not empty flags are set when FIFO management is enabled. The USART peripheral is active in run, sleep and low power modes. The USART interrupts cause the device to exit sleep and low power sleep modes. The USART is able to wake up the MCU from stop zero and stop one modes when the USART clock is set to HSI or LSE. In standby and shutdown modes, the peripheral is in power down and it must be reinitialized after exiting standby or shutdown mode. This table also highlights the differences between the four USARTs and the LPU art. The LPU art does not support synchronous mode, IRDA communication, LIN mode. This slide shows the extended features of the STM32G0 versus the STM32F0. This is a list of peripherals related to the USART. Please refer to these trainings for more information if needed. General purpose input or outputs. Reset and clock controller. Power controller. Interrupts controller. Direct memory access controller.